All right, gang, the attendance was 17,559 sold out. The gate was 5.12 million. Highest grossing uh, sporting event in the arena's history. Fight of the night was uh, Mosvar versus Lopez, and performance of the night went to Yana Frivola. They all won 50,000. What's up, buddy? Obviously, Dana, fun main event, technical main event, close main event. How did you score it in the final fight of the night? Yeah, I, I mean, I had, um, I, I had Aljo win in the fight. Yeah. But, but still close, right? Very close fight, yeah. What did you think of Henry's performance after three years away from the Incredible. Game? Yeah, you know I'm a big believer in ring rust. And, you know, not only did he fight five tough uh, rounds against a guy much bigger than him, um, you know, yeah, he looked good. And then for Aljamain, it looked like initially Henry might have the wrestling advantage, but Aljo was able to take his back a couple of times, get the hooks in. What was your reaction? Yeah, one of the things that impresses me about Henry Cejudo is, like the Marias fight, after the first round, I said, ooh, Henry's in trouble tonight. And then he makes these adjustments and comes back in the second round and, and looks unbelievable. So, um, yeah, I thought both guys fought a hell of a fight. Before this fight, we were talking about whoever wins, it does something for their legacy, right? For Aljo, it cements him as being one of the best bantamweights of all time. Do you think after that performance that is fair, that he is one of those, the best in history? Yeah, it was a big win for him. It was obviously a big win. You know, there's a lot of, uh, like I said, Leading up to this fight, you know, there's the Peter Yan fight, and, and then there's the Dillashaw fight, and, you know, going in and, 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 you know, grueling it out for five rounds with Henry Cejudo, regardless of the weight and size difference, it's, it's a big deal to beat Henry. You know, you usually don't make fights on the night of the fight. But well, you're going to ask me anyway? Well, I feel like it's fair to say Sean O'Malley's probably next for Aljamain Sterling, right? I mean, that what? That Sean O'Malley might just be next for Aljamain. Yeah, yeah, I've had better ideas than, uh, than what I did tonight. Uh, not a great idea, but yes, he's next. Yeah, when you bring him into the cage and they have the face off and then you slowly see it start to escalate with Marab, do you just think, oh, I shouldn't? Yeah, 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 it was a bad idea. Do we have any sort of timeline on when we'd like to do that fight? Um, yeah, probably August. Okay, in Boston? Probably. Okay, cool. Uh, Gilbert Burns, Bilal Mohammed Bilal got the win. Gilbert looked to be fighting kind of injured. I'm curious of your reaction to that fight. Yeah, he, he, he had a, a tear in his shoulder. I think it was that first scramble on the ground there when, when he took him down. And uh, his, he's got a tear. Yeah. yeah. And we're safe to say Bilal is fighting the winner of Leon versus Colby. And, and what's that? Bilal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Okay, and the last one for me, I wanted to sort of give some props to Diego Lopez. Stepped in on five days' notice against Mosvar. Nearly tapped him in the first round, fought really hard in the third round. On five days' notice, pretty impressive. Awesome. Incredible performance. Uh, kid's got a ton of heart. He's an absolute dog. L loved every minute of it, yeah. And what did we think of his haircut? Uh, well, listen, he fought so good, let's <laughs> leave his haircut alone. Uh, go ahead. Um, Dan, I want to ask about Yan Chan An. Uh, obviously, a great finish of Jessica Andrade. We had her back here, and I was asking her like, how big a fight between her and Jang could be for China. Um, do you have any insight on like the metrics of oh, maybe you can't do it there right now But like what could that do for that market that you guys have been continuing to push into? You know, what's crazy is Teddy Atlas was sitting with me during that fight and uh, Andraj kept throwing lead left hooks and And he says if she keeps this girl throws great straight right hands if she keeps throwing that lead left hook She's gonna knock her out with a straight right. And he literally called exactly what was gonna happen and she threw like three hooks in a row he literally called it two minutes before it happened because she kept throwing these lead left. He says, when people are sparring and they're throwing lead left hooks like that against somebody who can throw, I, I literally jump in the ring and tell them to stop. And, and I break up the whole sparring and, and break it down. But he literally called that that was going to happen. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do with Jan, where she's going to go, but I'm definitely going to look at China. Yeah. You could potentially go back to China and do yeah. that there. Wow. I'm looking at that right now. And uh, what do you think of Crone Gracie tonight? You know, I like Crone a lot, and uh, he, he's a good kid. Um, he came in very limited tonight, very limited. You know, it was like coming out of a time capsule in 1995, you know what I mean? It's a tough way to try to win a fight these days. Yeah, 30th anniversary, you'd never think you'd kind of see that. Well, the kid's got a ton of heart. He's got a good chin. I like him, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to shit on his performance, but, yeah, that was a, that was a rough, rough game plan.
Yeah, and uh, on the featured prelim map for Vola, great finish, first person to knock out Drew Dober in like 12 years or something. Um, he keeps calling out Patty. He wants this fight real, real bad. I know Patty's nursing some injuries, but is he a guy maybe you look at to grant that wish? Just I, I have no bad. idea. I mean, all these fights at that level are all about timing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, last thing, nothing to do with this card, but the last few days we've seen uh, Alex Pereira and Israel Adesanya going back and forth a lot on social media. And Alex is kind of hinting that he wants that MMA trilogy. Do you have any indication? Is he still wanting to go to 205 or is he maybe reconsidering to try to get that fight again? First of all, I didn't even know that. Um, but yeah, no, he's going to 205. Yeah. Any idea when we could see that debut? No, none. All right. Thank you. All right. Dana, hey. over here to your right. Hey. Uh, so May 20th, Aldana is out of the main event. Do you guys have a new main event for that card? Hmm? May 20th, Aldana's out. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're talking about uh, Raquel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, we don't, have, we don't have another fight for that. Raquel is going to be the backup uh, for that fight. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what we're doing there yet. Okay, and then more immediately, or I guess rather not more immediately. I thought you were telling me something I didn't know and that Aldana no. was out of the fight. I was like... When no. the fuck did that happen? Nobody told me. De definitely not. Um, but, you know, tonight, Bilal's next. Do we have any progress with Leon and Colby? Uh, no. Dana White, uh, yep. congratulations on a great night. Uh, Thank you. You packed the house in New Jersey, a Prudential Center. You came back every fight delivered. How impressed were you with Aljamain Sterling and Henry Sudo taking that initiative to sell this fight and pretty much pack this house or help pack this house? Yeah, I mean... Um, it wasn't a matter of those guys trying to sell the fight. I mean, if you are a fight fan, you realize that this was a great fight between two guys who stylistically match up very well. Um, and, and the card was a fun card, you know. And, and uh, I love when they deliver. The fights were awesome tonight. From the first prelim, the second prelim, on throughout the rest of the night, the fights were great. And how impressed were you with Gilbert Burns? He was obviously hurt, but he lasted all five rounds. He was fighting with essentially one hand. Like, how impressed yeah. were you with Gilbert Burns? I'm always impressed with Gilbert Burns. You know, um, his fight with Hamza Chemaev was unbelievable. And then what he did in Miami a few weeks ago was unbelievable. And the fact that he wanted to turn around this fast, uh, I have nothing but respect for that kid. And, and to think that he would fight with one shoulder is not shocking. He's an absolute savage. And after the long layoff, uh, Henry Ciudo obviously didn't fight uh, since 2019. Uh, he took off his gloves at the end of the fight, and I got a little bit worried that he might be retiring, and he said he doesn't know what he, what he wants. Are you going to try to talk to him into staying and not, you know, you know, he had a great performance. Would you talk him out if he said he wanted to retire or he wanted to? There's only been a couple guys I've tried to talk out of retiring at the time that they did, you know, it was DC and, and Habib, um, you know, Henry's been off for three years. He looked great tonight against a guy who's much bigger, much stronger. Um, but, I, you know, that's up to him, whatever he wants. I mean, I don't think you should have retired the first time. But, um, you know, if he decides to retire a second time, I probably wouldn't argue with him. And when's the next time you're coming back to the East Coast and I'm not afraid to beg? Um, yeah, we're talking about Boston this summer. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you very Thank much. You. Dana, over to your far right way hey, over here. Yep. Um, I wanted to ask about a little incident we saw last weekend. Uh, Conor McGregor kind of came back a little bit. He was in the, the ring in another promotion in Bare Knuckle. What were your thoughts on, on Conor's activities that weekend? Yeah, no, listen, I, you know, a few people have asked me this. You know, when you're in the business like we're in the business, sometimes it's fun to just go and be a fan. And I think, uh, I think that's what Conor was doing that night. I, I have no problem with it whatsoever. Have we any movement on when that Chandler fight is going to happen? I know we just saw the announcement that the Ultimate Fighter is going to air in a few weeks. Yeah. Any more news? We don't. Not yet, no. And uh, I wanted to ask as well, your, your business partner, KSI, back in the ring next week, do you think he's going to win? Um, who's he fighting? <laughs> uh, guy 9-0, and Joe Fournier. Interesting. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Dana. Yep. Uh, after the fight, Marab Devalashvili, he took Sean O'Malley's jacket. He's currently the number one ranked bantamweight. What plans do you have for him for his next fight? I don't know. He doesn't want to fight Aljo. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So I, I, I have no idea. Was that fight offered? What? Inverse Aljo? At oh, any yeah. Point? You could have that fight tomorrow. Yeah. Dana, over here. Yep. Speaking of cross-promotionals, I saw... The UFC Twitter account retweeted a couple weeks ago a promotion from a skateboarding championship series. Right. Um, there was a few connections we noticed. It was on Rumble, so with the slap fighting, there was that tit for tat, perhaps. 
And it turns out that Lorenzo Fertitta is one of the owners of that league or of one of the promotions in that. I'm not sure the exact details of that. What was the UFC's decision to do that? Was this like a favor for a friend? Does Endeavor have a part in this? Lorenzo and I own it. You're in part of it? No. Okay. We own a company called Throw One. We own Ridiculousness, we own SLS, we own Nitrous Circus, and we own Travis Pastrada's NRX Rally Car. Okay, didn't know that. So that's gonna be just a staple in the cross promotion like slap fighting has been the slap power league? I don't know. If I feel like it, yes. <laughs> Fair. Um, also getting into the slap fighting promotion, um, not exactly how you probably envisioned it working in the bids, some good, some bad, a lot of you know publicity, negative, your own issues as well. How is this playing forward into the next season? We saw promotions of it on there. It's been incredible. The deal that I just cut for, for, for Slap is bigger than the UFC deal we cut with Spike TV after the first season of The Ultimate Fighter. I don't give a shit what the media says about it. They don't matter. So money-wise, it's working out is what you're saying, basically. It's yeah. fucking unbelievable. Not only is it unbelievable money-wise, it's been unbelievable as far as social media goes. We're number one in all of sports. And when I say all of sports, if you take the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, F1, WWE, and who am I forgetting, and added them all together, their numbers don't compare to slaps. Um, yeah. Could you? Yeah. It seems a little doubtful. Yeah, you can doubt it all you want. I mean, I was covering for the finale of it, and I saw the numbers on Rumble, and you, you, there were people watching, but... There were people watching. It did 3.2 million viewers, and 1.7 million of them had never been to Rumble before. Well, I was one of those, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, but it certainly, that number didn't show up on that counter that Rumble but had. But that's how it works when you stream. When it's streaming, it's not really the actual number right there. Um, it's the same thing when you go live on Instagram. I mean, is Eric in here? What's a, what's a, like, a, if you have a big number and you're streaming, uh, how, how does that exactly work? Kind of the same as you're saying. So, we did Instagram right. Live tonight for the walkout for the, for the red corner, the corner of the main event. We had 21,000 concurrent. We don't have a goal. Yeah. So he was saying 21,000 concurrence. What's a massive number when you're streaming? I mean, we were the biggest stream on a Saturday for, for Slap. The, the good thing is, is that most of you guys don't understand social media and how it works. And wh who, what, what publication are you from? MMA Mania. Okay. Well, I'll give you the numbers on Slap that were done by a third party that does this. We, we didn't pull the numbers. These guys are like the Nielsen's numbers for, for, for social media. We destroy everything in sports with power slap. Okay, and are you at all concerned that it, some of it is perhaps, and I, this is, I'll apologize in advance because it sounds a little rude, but. No, go, fire it, away. Some of it might be laughing at, not with kind of a deal, like bad publicity being, yeah. you know. Do you think I give a shit? That's I just why pulled, I just asked. I just did a deal that's bigger than the, ult than the UFC did when they went on Spike TV. I don't give a shit who's laughing. You know who's laughing? This guy. There you go. That's who's Thanks. laughing. That answered my question. Thank you. No, my pleasure. Dana, right here, just second row on your left. Yeah. Just wondering your thoughts on uh, the atmosphere tonight in Newark and the fight week in general, and do you want to come back here? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, you know, it's been a while since we've been here. Um, we'll be in Atlantic City next. We'll be back in Jersey, and we're doing Atlantic City next. So um, we have a great relationship with the governor here, he's been awesome to us, and yeah, can't wait. And then my other question is about Mavzar Ivloev. He got a he got a, the win over he got a good win in a close fight against Diego Lopez. Can you just talk about him, his potential, and what you think about him all around. Yeah, no, he's a stud, man. L let me tell you what, that arm bar was deep, and that knee bar was deep, and uh, you know he fought out of both of those, and uh, you know he's 17 and 0 now, and. I'm excited to see him. Top 10, see where he ends up on Tuesday after the media, uh, you know, does their thing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Dana, congratulations on another fabulous card in the New York City area. Uh, November at the Garden has become a staple, but you've done uh, three events in the last nine months in the area. Any plans to go back to Long Island, 
maybe Brooklyn, maybe Newark, uh, to do two events in this area once a year. What's the question? Any plans to do multiple events in the New York area outside yeah. of... O outside Madison. of Jersey? In oh. New York, you mean? The New York area. Yeah. Madison Square Garden is that... Absolutely. Jer uh, Atlantic City, MSG, um, and uh, I, yeah, I don't, I, other than that, I don't know right now, but those two for sure. Okay, and a quick uh, point, Aljo mentioned uh, perhaps going to the Caribbean, having a King of the Islands uh, thing. What do you think about going <laughs> to the Caribbean? I think that sounds fun, but uh, highly unlikely. Uh, yeah, I bet you my entire staff will want to work that event, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if it's going to happen. Aljo said the same thing. Yeah, yeah I would love it. Thank you, sir. Dana, question. Hey, Henry was just so close tonight. Great main event. Mm. If he does stay, I know you guys had a brief conversation in the cage. If he does stay, what do you need to, it's hard to say, but two, two wins, one win, and he's right back in the title contention. How do you see his path if he doesn't retire? It is tough to say. It, it, it would, you know, depend on who he fought, what weight class he was in, how he did. I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of ifs on, on something like that. But, uh, you know, coming off a three-year layoff like he has, you know, and again, when you think about when you think about what an incredible athlete Henry Cejudo is, and he's coming off a three-year layoff, and, and you look at this this tough fight he was in tonight, and then you look at John Jones and what John Jones did. That's why you just you can't really say it enough how special and how incredible John. I know, I know you asked me about Henry, and I flipped this whole thing into a John Jones, but it's just so true. And one of the things about Jones, too, I, I, for some reason I was thinking about this tonight during the fight. And, uh, like, when he fought Alexander Gustafsson, it was the first time he'd ever been taken into deep water. And, and you know, John, uh, outside the cage, didn't make all the best decisions. And who knows how hard he really trained for that fight or what he was doing before that fight. But to dog it out the way that he did, it's just like, you think about all the great fights that happen, and you think about the stuff that John Jones does, it's pretty special. I know I didn't answer your question, but... This is where we ended up, sorry. Right here. Dana, right down the middle of yeah. here. We haven't had an update on either Rose Namajunas or Dustin Poirier in a while. Do you have anything planned for them in the coming months? Not off the top of my head, no. Thank you. Thank you. You guys done with me? Go ahead, sir. Um, so this is the <laughs> first time we've had Aljamain Sterling as the headliner of a pay-per-view, or really of any event, actually. So how do you <laughs> feel about him as, as carrying an event here? That's hilarious. Um, yeah, I mean, it was sold out. Highest grossing event in the arena's history, sporting event. Um, you know, it was good. It was good. It was a good fight. I mean, people knew stylistically. I mean, the crowd, it's in his hometown and people were cheering for Henry. I don't know what that means, but uh, yeah. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what anybody thinks of either one of these guys, the one thing you did know that it would be a damn good fight. One thing he's been trying to do for many years, as you know, is, is trying to get a fight in New York, and he's had some issues with the, uh, the commissions and, and the medicals and that kind of thing. Is that something that, you know, you can kind of work with the commission for to, to try and kind of expedite things in any meaningful way to kind of, because he fights everywhere else. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, we would, if he wants to fight in New York, we, we'd do everything we could to try to make it happen. I mean, but, you know, the commission, tells us what we're going to do. We don't tell them what we're going to do. Of course. Yeah. Um, one more thing about main events here. We, hit, we mm -hmm. are finally going to have a flyweight non-title main event for the first time in six years. Uh, is that something you kind of realize as you're, as you're planning these events that we really haven't gone to flyweight to headline these fight night cards? No. <laughs> Never crossed my mind at all. There's a lot of demand for the, these fights. People like the, the flyweights. They're, they're exciting. They're fun. Uh, is that something you might think about planning more in the future? What, what is your question? I'm, I'm confused by this. To have more flyweight, uh, you know, headliners and that kind of thing, especially on fight night cards. Sure. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, just two quick follow-ups. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> speaking of bantamweights, do you know what the latest with Umar and Omega Madoff is? Everybody's asking. Yeah, we were, we were talking about him earlier. Um, you know, that's a, guy, that's a guy not everybody's beating the door down to fight. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out with him. How difficult is it when you have guys like that that just it's really tough to get them their breakthrough fight? 100%. 100%, especially when, you know, it's always hard when you have these guys that are in, you know, in the top 10, you know, when you start going 7, 6, 5, 4, and then this guy's behind. They, they, you know, nobody wants to take that risk on a guy that isn't ranked. It's, it's, it's tough. 
Those are the fights, listen, those are the fights that publicly everybody says they'll take, but privately nobody wants to take them. Yeah, and just last thing, I uh, want to drop a stat for you. With Henry Cejudo's loss tonight, fighters who are over 35 below the welterweight division are 2-29 in Holy title shit. fights, and Tyron Woodley got both those wins. Uh, what does that kind of say about how difficult it is for aging fighters at the lower divisions? Fascinating. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know. I never thought about it till right now. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It's, it, listen... I don't care who you are, how good you are, whatever the deal is, taking three years off, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was off for three years. He, he never looked the same when he came back. He was still great, still did amazing things, but never looked like he looked before he took three years off. It's tough to do. And I, and, and I don't know, I mean, a lot of you guys in here are combat sports guys might, might know the answer to this, but um, who other than John Jones has taken three years off and come back and looked as incredible as he did? Go in there and finish a guy in the heavyweight division, a division in which he's never fought before, as quickly and as easily as he did. Yeah, maybe George St. Pierre, but he had a tough time with Bisbing too. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody's ever done it like John Jones. Yeah, it's only the greatest ones ever, so yeah. that's the show. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Good night, everybody.